If you have not been on campus for a while, you may not have ever been in Beacon Hall, and uh, so this is a pretty remarkable building. Depending on when you were here, there were either 100 students or there were 150 students. Today we're at 275 students. We are the fastest growing percentage-wise, the fastest growing institution of higher education in the country. In the last two years, we've had 48.6% enrollment growth. Part of that is because of the reputational advantage that I think Beacon is starting to enjoy. That if you are serious about an accredited college education, and if you have a learning difference, then Beacon's a place to come. In 1993, I got hired in, in my first real estate company, and in 1994, they had this huge real estate conference. It's the biggest real estate conference in my industry. They took everybody in my office, all the salespeople, but me. They left me home. Now think about that, like the sort of, again, humiliation and all that kind of stuff. In 1995, they sent all of us, including me. In 1996, they sent just me. Now how did that happen? Well, I'll tell you why it happened. Because in 1995, when they sent everybody, I was the first guy at the booth in that convention in Las Vegas. I did not party. I didn't have a drink. I didn't go to a casino. I would have been kicked out because I looked like I was 15. But I didn't do any of that stuff, man. I was worked hard. Who was the second guy to show up every day to work in Las Vegas? The CEO. The CEO, right? So the next year, when they had budget cuts and they were looking at the list of all these people, the CEO said, I don't know who that guy is but send that guy. And he said to the, the new CEOs, he goes, if you want to watch anybody to watch, watch that Crossman guy. And I became a senior vice president at 27. That's crazy. But how did that happen? It happened partly because of my fear, partly because of my anxiety, partly because of my dyslexia, partly because of my insecurity. I showed up first. And because it was the first one in, it changed everything. I mean, because you wouldn't know of talking to a lot of us that we even have learning disability because it's not visual. It's not we walk around with an impairment or a disability that is visual that you can see. Most of us were very articulate, we're very high functioning, and so you would not know that we have a disability unless we disclose it or unless, like you said, Taylor said, you can see it. You know, if maybe a mistake you make at work or something that you do or if you have to, like, take more, more, maybe more notes or have mm -hmm. things um, described to you a different way. Like I said, for me, because my learning disability is auditory processing, um, for, you know, I don't do well with just a lot of directions at once. That's why with those panel interviews, I was like, oh, my God. Like, the first panel interview on, I went on, I, like, I almost had a panic attack because there was firing questions at you and they want an answer. Like there's no time to process or think about what you want to say. It's you, we need an answer now. Next question, you know. But by the time I got to my fifth panel interview, I was so comfortable. 